Now that we've learned the basics, we're going to load jQuery into our project. So let's find the library first. So let's go to jQuery.com. And we can go to download. So let's download the minified version. So how about compressed production? jQuery. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. Copy. And then we can delete our dependency.js file. This was just uh, for your learning. And we can create a new file called jQuery. And we need .js. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in. So it's version 3.3.1. So I'm just going to change the name just so we know the version. So last time we loaded jQuery into our project, we used the CDN. Um, now we're gonna actually store it locally, uh, but with Require.js, we can actually do both. So that is what we're gonna be doing in this lesson. So we're gonna be loading from the CDN, and if that fails, then we will have this file as a backup to load uh, to load jQuery. So say if you're working offline, and we can demonstrate that in a bit, and you can't reach that CDN, then we can use this backup file. So in our config, we need to change this. So let's change our paths, and we need a path for jQuery. And we just need to replace this with our jQuery file name, which is jQuery 3.3.1. One. Okay, um, I do need to save this file as well. We can close these. And in our require, we are now requiring jQuery. And I'm going to change our alert. And instead, let's use some jQuery and see if we can select the body. Change the HTML to hello jQuery. Okay, cool. Um, and something else is required here. Uh, we are using jQuery and we actually need to define that object um, as a parameter to pass to our function, um, which we will do using this uh, dollar syntax, which you're all very, very familiar with now. Okay, so we've loaded jQuery from this file. Um, maybe we just check to make sure that has worked. Um, so we can actually go back here and refresh. And there you go, hello jQuery. So that's working nicely. If we go to the network tab and refresh again, as I've shown you before, to see the files loading. You can see we've loaded index.html, then we've loaded require.js, then our main.js file, and then our jQuery file. And we can make use of that jQuery dollar uh, syntax um, now in our function. So let's also load the CDN. So then we, we have both. And as mentioned, you know, the CDN is useful because um, if the user accesses another website with jQuery, then this will be cached on their machine. Um, so it'll be nice and quick. And as a backup, then we can use the local file uh, if we're offline, for example. So let's have a look. I've just copied that CDN. And we need to put these in square brackets because now we're defining two. And I'll just move it onto a second line. So we're now loading jQuery from this URL. Um, again, we do not need the .js even on these. Uh, URL so we can remove that. So it's going to be fetching jQuery from this URL and if it doesn't find it then we'll load from this file. Okay so we can give that a text. We should a test sorry and we should see a slight difference in our network tab in terms of how things are loading. Um, and you can see now we've loaded jQuery.min.js and you can actually see that pop up there of the path which we're loading that file from. So it is https ajax.googleapis.com, etc. 
And we still got our Hello jQuery working nicely. Now I'm just gonna turn my laptop onto airplane mode. Um, this is on the second screen. So I'm actually now offline. I'm gonna empty the cache and do a hard reload. And let's see what happens. Okay, so if you go to our console, you can first see that our get request for the jQuery library is actually errored. So we're not able to reach the internet because I've turned my laptop onto airplane mode. So we do have this error. But regardless of that error, you can see that we've actually fallen back and loaded jQuery from our file instead. So you've still got jQuery working in our project. So that's pretty cool. That is how we load jQuery into our project using Require.js. And next lesson, we're going to talk about shim config, which is more around where your dependencies might also have dependencies. So we'll take Bootstrap as an example, and we'll be loading that into our projects using the shim config.